doing today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we're coming out of uh, Psalms 63 today. Psalms 63, the heading of the message is giving thanks to God. Today's heading of our message today on Psalms uh, Psalm 63 is giving thanks to God. I want to ask you this today before we get into the scriptures today. Have you been thankful to God? Did you wake up this morning and recognize that God made a way for you to eat? Did you recognize that God made a way for you to brush your teeth today? Did you recognize that God woke you up and you're not dead? Did you recognize that? See, because yesterday I was looking at the obituary again, and there was 41-year-old people, 61-year-old people, and there was 57-year-old people dead. So the Bible says, let everything that praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. That's what the Word of God states. Let everything that have breath praise you, Lord. My mentor calls me quite often. We speak three, four times a week. Powerful man of God. He's actually writing a book right now. I think it's going to be one of the most powerful books that ever were made by mankind. Because for 32 years he prepared this book. 32 years. The, the, it, 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 it consists of seven loaves, is what he says. Seven loaves is what it consists of. But it talks about the crumbs that are in the basket. The heading of the book is called The Crumbs in the Basket. But anyway, we want to say that we need to be thankful for every single thing that we have in our life. If you have family, you need to be thankful. If you don't have cancer, you need to be thankful. You need to be thankful that God feeds you every day. Do you ever hear the birds tweet? They're thankful, aren't they? Come on, guys. Are the birds thankful to God? Do you hear them tweet? Yeah. Do you hear them? Can you tell the joy of them? Huh? Is your dog, is your dog thankful that you love it? People make songs for birds family. Amen. So, is your dog thankful? Huh? Yeah. Yes. When you feed it, it's thankful. When you love it, it's thankful, right? Is your kitty thankful? Yes. See, they're just thankful for the simple things. How much more should we be thankful? Sometimes we're not even thankful that God chose to make you a human. He could have chose to make you a cat where you had a short life, or a dog where you had a short life. He could have made you a frog. He could have made you a leaf on a tree that fell down when a fall came. See, we don't even look at that part, that we need to be thankful that God created you to be a human being. Right? Isn't that wild that God chose you to be a human being? to be alive, to breathe. But so many days we go through our days and we don't thank God, we don't praise God. The heading of this message today is called Giving Thanks to God. Do you know you, I want you to recognize people that don't give thanks to God, that aren't happy and thankful for what they have, they're sad people. Most of those people are sad. Why? Because they're looking at what they don't have instead of what they do have. Amen? Should we be thankful that we have food and a roof over our head and clothes on our back? Huh? I'll tell you what, guys. Listen to this. Tomorrow night at 12 o'clock, tomorrow night, it's going to be one below zero. I bet you're going to be thankful you have a bed. Uh, I bet you're going to be thankful that the heat's working. Huh? And that you got a cozy blanket to crawl underneath while that bitter cold's chewing at your door right outside your window. Right? Isn't it incredible how much more people are thankful in the winter that they have a house than when it's summer? Amen? People are more thankful to have food and a roof over their head in the winter than they are in the summer. It's rough when it's cold, huh? When it's 20 below zero with the wind chill blowing at your window. And it's cold in your house even though the heat's kicked all the way up. And you're like, whoa, it's freezing out. Guess what? You hear a lot of people happen to whisper, boy, I'm so glad. You hear it a couple times, at least out of the time winter. Man, I'm so glad I got a place to live. I'm so glad. But see, God has to change this circumstance for the people to be thankful. I'm asking you now, are you thankful? Let's get into the Word of God, Psalms 63, Erica. 
And everyone here? The first, it's just the first verse we're starting with right now. Oh God, thou art my God. He's saying, David is saying, oh God, thou art my God. David was filthy rich. He had huge rooms. We speak about it week after week, filled with gold. But David was smart enough to say, God, thank you. A rich man was able to say, God, thank you. Listen, verse 1. Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I what? Seek thee. David said, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee. Let's go on. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. See, David knew that he needed to praise God. He needed to know that he needed to seek God. I want to ask you the question, and I want you to be honest and earnest in your heart. How hungry or thirsty are you for the things of God? I want you to recognize something. And I'm not saying it to be negative, but I always try to help you grow in the Lord. If you're not thankful to God, and you're not seeking God the way that you should seek God, you better believe that he's going to make a way for you to pay attention to who he is. And you might not like what he's going to do. He might take the one that you love the most away from you. You're paying attention to that person too much. Guess what? I just took them to God. Now you're going to look at me. See, God is a jealous God. He said, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God only, and so no serve so serve no other gods before me. He's a jealous God, and he wants you to pay attention to him. But what do we do? We go around paying attention to what we want. Walmart's important, the mall's important, our girlfriends are important, our boyfriends are important. These things seem to be just too important. And what we got to recognize is, believe me, when I tell you, you need to hear the Spirit today. God can take away that thing that you love most. He can take it away from you. And guess what? Hopefully, sooner or later, when he takes that thing away from you, whether it's for good or it's not for good, you begin to seek him so that he can have it come back in your life. we got to be careful not to worship people. We gotta be careful not to worship money. We gotta be careful not to worship self. Self is the easiest thing to worship. It's called idolatry. It's witchcraft. It's from hell. <clears throat> Let's look at what David is saying here. Verse one: God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. You know, I was speaking to Erica yesterday about this. We had a great Bible study for over an hour and a half yesterday. And we were talking about this. I said, do you know this? And listen, I'm a preacher, so I'm allowed to say this. A lot of people allowed, would be afraid to say this. Listen, your breath is spirit. Your breath is spirit, people. What your breath is is spirit. When you were a baby, you had that embryo going through your body when you were inside your mom. You weren't actually breathing. You didn't have spirit, you didn't have breath. But when you came out and they whacked you a shot, and the Lord breathed his spirit into you, you now have breath. But now I want to let you know something. You're either going to have the breath of Christ, or you're going to have the breath of self. We were speaking about this last night, and I was telling her, if the word of God does not come out of your mouth throughout your life, you're going to hell. It's a fact. It is a fact. We were talking about it yesterday in John 3. You must be born of water and of the Spirit. You must worship the Lord in spirit and truth. Let me ask you this question today. Are you worshiping God in spirit and truth? Are you giving God thanks? Listen, God's not interested in how much money I make. God's not interested in where I'm going and what I'm doing. God is interested in that you become a new creature where old things have passed away and old things have become new. And that His Word flows through your body richly. Do you know there's so many Christians, they go to church their whole life and they never learn the Word of God? We spoke about this last night. I said to her, Erica, let me ask you this question. I said, dude, can, are you retaining God's Word faithfully? She says, well, I remember the scripture verses that I put out on the internet every day, but I don't remember last week's. I said, what are you going to do? Now hear this now and receive this. This is going to be hard for you to receive. And now listen, remember, the preacher is a liar if this is not happening. And the next 
next 10 years when Muslims take our Bibles completely from this country, and you no longer, I'm going to close in a second, we'll to it, and you no longer have the word, what are you going to do? You better hear the preacher today. This country is becoming a Muslim country. You better get ready for it. I'm telling you right now, the Muslims are coming to take America. And in 10 years from now, when this word is gone in your heart, when David said, I hide that word within my heart, that I might not sin against thee, when this word is gone in your heart, where are you going to turn when there's no more God? When there's no more word to give you strength? You're going to turn to drugs, alcohol, porn, pills? What are you going to turn to? I'm telling you now, I'm telling you now that the Muslims are working on getting rid of the Word of God in America. Listen, they took prayer to school, didn't they? Huh? Do you know what happened? This is a heavy statement. But do you know what happened to the lady that took prayer out of school? Did you hear what they found her three years ago? They found her in the airport in England, chopped up in 50 million pieces in a suitcase. The one that got prayer taken out of all the schools around the world. They found that woman, she was 63 years old, chopped up in a million pieces of different plastic bags at an airport. If that wasn't the wrath of God, if going to the county prison wasn't the wrath of God, I don't know what is. So we get into it, and as we're getting into it, what I'm trying to explain to you is that God says, giving thanks to God is not on what you say, but what you do. Giving thanks to God is crossing the old lady across the street, feeding a homeless person, giving someone somewhere to live, helping someone get a shower that needs it. Giving thanks to God is not words, it's action. But God wants you to speak his word to other people. See, he said he spoke his word and healed the disease. His word, not my word, not Williams. Huh? Not our word, but his word. He said he spoke his word and healed the disease. He said he wants to make you an instrument of righteousness. He wants you to give thanks by telling people that you're proud of the word of God. Are you ashamed of the word of God? you got to understand it says give thanks to God is the heading. Psalm 63. If you're ashamed of God's word, when you bow before him, he has no other ultimatum but tell the Father, this one's not ours. Father, the word never came out of the person. They're not born of the Spirit. They don't even know you. The Father, this is what it says. The Bible says, I never knew you. Depart from me to the lower parts. You worker of iniquity. See, I'm not here to beat you up. I'm here to warn you. I'm here to coach you. But you need to get in this word and you need to give thanks to God and you need to share this word with other people and be thankful for the clothes that are on your back and the roof that's over your head. Remember what the preacher said today, people. Hear me now. Hear me now. Muslims are coming to take this Bible away from us. We're running out of time. There's 22, 22 guerrilla warfare ISIS camps in America. One's in New York State. Right now, the town called Hancock. They're all over this country right now. And nobody's stopping them. Why? Because they're going to let them rise up. Look, man, they took the money, they're taking the name of God off of money now. They're taking all the commandments out of all the, all the courthouses now. Children aren't even allowed to pray. If you're found reading your Bible in school, you're a leper. Oh, look at that dirtbag over there reading God's Word. Let's take them out of the school and stone them to death. Am I speaking truth? You're not even allowed to read your Bible in school. You can't sit down at lunchtime and read God's Word. But you can stand outside of a house and scream, Oh, there you are, you are, oh, you are. Oh, you want smoking. Huh. Did you hear the new thing? They're allowing Muslims to pray face down in all the schools of America. We have to allow them to respect their God. They bow before their God. Once or twice a day, we have to take out three minutes. You see in New York City? They shut a street down every single day now so they can bow in the street. We have to let them do their three-minute prayer. And then the, the cops are there on horses just sitting there with their hats on, waiting for these people to finish their prayer. And then they rise up to do it twice a day to stop all traffic in New York City for those people who love to pray before their God. But we can't praise our God anymore. And God's saying, you know what? America, you don't want the Bible. 
you don't want it. You don't want me. You don't want to serve me. You don't want to read the word. I'm not the Muslim stay away from you. You don't want me. It's okay. I have a bill of divorce we're ready for you. That's what the Lord's saying. Let's go on into the next verses. Verse 1 again. God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longeth for thee. And a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Do you know when King David was reigning, people loved God back then? When you got a king that's reading the word of God and serving God and doing what's right, you show me a king and I'll show you his people. You show me a leader and I'll show you his people. Let's move on. Verse 2. To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Listen to what he's saying there. To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. People, this is a king giving thanks to God. Are you with me? It's a king giving thanks to God. How much more should we praise God than what he did as a king? But listen, you can't praise God with your mouth and have your heart far from Him. You can't praise God and practice covetous ways. You can't praise God half-heartedly. It's nothing worse than watching a cage match fight when the one guy's really tough and the other guy's weak and he's half-hearted about it and he didn't work out right and you watch him get his face bashed in and he's thrown on the ground he's getting 30 punches when he's knocked out and the other guy's just beating his eyes. So you look at the guy and say, this is stupid. This is stupid. You know what was tough? When Muhammad Ali in the first round got his jaw broken by Joe Frazier, and Muhammad Ali for 15 rounds with a broken jaw and knocked Joe Frazier out and won the world championship. Now that's a fighting man. Broke his jaw, first shot around. First round. Boom! He went down and he went to his corner and said, My jaw's broke. My jaw's broke. Trying to say, What do you want to do something before you know? He said, Come on, man. Muhammad, we can see the bone sticking out. Your face is broken. I'm all the You're about to see a warrior, dude. Fifteen rounds. Fought with that. Being punched through the jaw. Punched through the jaw. Punched through the jaw. And at the end, wham! Knocked Joe Fraser out. Let's go on. To see thy power and thy glory, so I have seen it in the sanctuary. Verse 3. Chris, I love the kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. Have you ever said that to God? Probably none of us probably in the room ever said it. Lately I've been saying it to His grace more and more and more when I get alone through God's grace. Now I say, Lord Jesus, I love you. I love you. And then I say, Father, and now it's, it's only through His grace. Father, I love you. I love you. And then I say, Holy Spirit, I love you. And I say it to God's grace. I say, Father, please hear me. Feel my heartbeat. Feel the center of my heart. Feel that I'm telling you with my heart. Because my, my flesh is weak. Lord, my flesh is weak, but my spirit is willing, and I love you, Lord. That's what God wants to hear. More of that. I love you, Father. I depend upon him more and more than I ever had. Because the trials are getting stronger. The tribulations are getting stronger. The enemy's coming harder. He sure does how to make you go to your knees, don't he? He sure does how to get your attention. And that's what I'm saying to some people in here. If you're not faithfully in the word, if you're not speaking God's word, God is going to create something in your life to humble you. It doesn't matter who it is. He said, I'm a jealous God. He said, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. There was no God before me. There is none. Those statues that you're serving, that money, that gold, all that stuff. Do you know when you get to heaven, the floors are made of gold and the walls are made of gold? Uh, rubies, and the outside are made of foundations of sapphire and diamonds. Why is that? Because God said, why did man worship this junk? What you see to be sure, what you see right now to be uh, 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 just these walls are emeralds. The floors are made of gold in heaven because it's junk. People don't realize it's not a big deal. Gold and diamonds and rubies, it's not a big deal to God. Let's go on. To see thy power and thy glory, I have seen thee in the sanctuary tree, because, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. David what? David gave thanks to God. He said, my lips will praise you, Lord. You praise the Lord like that? Listen, I'm not here to mock you, to put you down. I'm telling you, if you want God to open the windows of heaven and pour a blessing that you cannot contain, if you want to see God do wonderful and marvelous and unbelievable things, you ever imagine, begin to praise him. Begin to worship him. He said, I inhabit the praises of my people. I seek for my 
people to seek me, to love me with all their heart, their mind, their soul, and their strength. Listen, people, you have to admit it. God is changing your lives. Something is happening to you. You come into this church and something is happening in your life. You're not the same person you used to be. You don't have a bottle of booze in your hand tapping on a porn, porn page. God is working in your life. You're not popping pills to just get stupid and be retarded. You're not smoking dope all the time. You're not in and out of jail every 20 days. God is changing your lives. That's why it says, give me praise. I deserve it. I'm changing you. Listen, I'm not that psychiatrist. I'm not that caseworker. You understand? I'm not that pill. I'm God. Praise Him. Praise God. Praise the Word of God. Verse 4. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up thy hands in thy name. Listen, thus will I bless thee while I live. David said, Lord, I will bless thee. I will seek thee. I will worship thee. This is a king worth more money than anybody on the planet. And he had enough smarts to bow before God. Remember what I was telling you before. God loves you. He cares about you. He cares about your children. But he said, I will not sit before a person that will not praise me. That will not notice who I am. Notice that my word is important in their life. I will stir their lives up. I will bring a hurricane. I will bring a tornado. I'll raise hell to touch your feet until you praise me. He's a mighty God, people. Listen, let me tell you something. He can have a doctor come knock on your door. In the little room with a little book in his hand, come up to your bed. With the nurses and everyone's real quiet, you're waiting for what they're going to say to you. He can do that. Oh, then all of a sudden everybody's praying. You're on the phone. Tell them, Barbara, to pray for me. They're getting ready to come and tell me some bad news. Huh? Everybody's, oh, go down the chapel, go down the chapel, pray again. I need mean, God, I'm about to die. Man, everybody needs God, huh? That's a testimony. God said, praise me in the morning. Praise me in the noon time. David said, I praise thee seven times a day, God. And God kept giving to him and giving to him and giving to him. He lacked nothing. Amen? You see, people that don't praise God, don't read their Bible, they're miserable. Let me tell you something. They can be shining like the devil. They can have to be the light of life look so great. But inside, they're open tombs. Spouses, they strain out of that and they swallow the table. Inside, they're dead. Dead. No life. God wants to give you life and give you more abundantly. Give thanks to God. Read His Word. Study it. Share it with people. Get out of yourself and your problems. And I don't have this and I don't have that and I don't have this. You got food, roof over your head. Somebody loves you. What else do you need? Let's go on. Verse 5. Verse 4 one more time. That's why I praise thee while I live. I will lift up thy hands on thy name. 5. My soul shall be satisfied with what? Marrow and fatness. And my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. Listen, this man was happy. You know why he was happy? Not because of his riches. He was happy because God loved him. He knew that he knew that he knew that money wasn't satisfied, drugs weren't satisfied, alcohol doesn't satisfy, porn doesn't satisfy, pills don't satisfy, anger, jealousy, lust doesn't satisfy. You know, I was talking to Erica the other day, and I said, you know what lust is like? Lust is like having a big thing in your living room that burns wood, and you put pine in there, and it burns up real quick. Right? And you gotta put more in there. It's never satisfied. You gotta keep putting that wood in there. And when you go outside and you get love, which is that big old log of oak, huh? You bring that big old log of oak in there, and you first get the fire started, you put that oak in there, that baby's gonna burn for 10 hours. That's love. Huh? You go to Burger King and you eat whoppers? You eat whoppers? What happens? A little while later, they just come right out and you're hungry again. Why? Because that's lust. You're eating that lust. You're eating what your body wants instead of what it should have. Let me tell you something. You take that big old steak 
with protein in it. You get those mashed potatoes rolling, those greens rolling with that big old fruit salad, and you eat that, you won't be hungry for a while. Because that's love. That's love. Love's satisfied. Lust doesn't satisfy. Only lasts for a little while. It's like a firecracker. Bam! And it's gone. It doesn't have nothing to offer. Bam! 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 It's like a firecracker. It has nothing to offer you. Amen? It has a need you too. Lust always leaves you looking ugly, angry, upset, don't know what to do in life no more, and you're chasing that thing. Whatever it is, you're chasing that lust. I'm not just talking about sexuality. Drugs, alcohol, porn, anger, bitterness. Money, chasing money. Got people that work 70, 80, 90 hours a week and they're still broke as a joke. Chase it. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. And they don't think those 70 years in the life and they're broke and they say, oh my God, I wasted my whole life chasing that change. And it's gone. Always, lust always leads you looking stupid, don't it? It does. Last verse is here. Let's get into it. For thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up thy hands in thy name. Five, my soul shall be satisfied with the marrow of fatness. He said, Lord, you satisfy me. Drugs don't satisfy me. Alcohol don't satisfy me. Lust doesn't satisfy me. But God, I got your word. I started speaking it to others. And I started giving you thanks. And guess what? I'm satisfied. I can guarantee you God's going to satisfy. Huh? Let me ask you a question. Did that ex-girlfriend satisfy you? Nope, where is she now? That ex-boyfriend or husband, he satisfied? Nope, where did all the money that's been in and out of your hands did it satisfy? Nope. Drugs, alcohol, porn, does it, does, it, does, it, does it satisfy? No, it always leaves it empty, empty. Like put the log to the fire, put more pine in there. Put more pine, 20 minutes is gone. Put more pine in there. Somebody go outside and give me a note. Give me a piece of love. Put that love in there. Right? <clears throat> Verse 5. My soul shall be satisfied with the marrow of fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with what? Joyful lips. When? When he has sought the Lord, when he has praised the Lord, when he has gotten to the Word of God and did what God wanted him to do. Read it now. My soul shall be satisfied with the marrow of fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. David says, guess what? Lord, only you satisfy me. Only your word satisfy me. All that money he had, he said, I love that word more than thousands of pieces of silver and gold. I love my word, Father. Heading of the message, Mark and Diane, today, giving thanks to God. Giving thanks to God, Psalm 63. We're coming to a close. Verse 6. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditated on thee in the night watches, who was God? Who was David focused on? Seven wives here? Seven wives he had. Was he focused on women, the lust, the pleasures of the heart? Was he focused on that? He said, no, seven times a night will I praise thee. He kept his mind straight, even though he was married, even though he had children, even though he was full of money was coming in. He had to take care of the whole kingdom. David said, I will not take my heart off of you, God. Because you know what? Your life is short-lived. It is short-lived. You're here and you're gone. Your life is as long as a DVD player. It's as long as a movie. You're here and you're gone. No one's promised tomorrow. I have, I have people in this, in this audience right now that keep saying, no more, it's stopping. I got real bad pains in my heart. Right now, well, hey, you don't know. We don't know what God's going to do. Let's go on, six. When I remember thee upon the bed, and my meditation is on thee, <laughs> night watches, he said, I remember thee. David sought the Lord. You need to seek the Lord. Listen, let me ask you a question. If you go to the gym once a week, right, let's, well, let's we'll put the ladies here on this one. The lady goes to the gym once a week and she got this silky, beautiful dress. It's so beautiful for springtime. She can't wait to wear it, right? She goes to the gym once a week, right? This other girl's going five days a week, boy. She's getting into it, right? Who's going to look good, nice for that dress in the springtime? The one that applies himself to what God wants. The guy's got a muscle, bro, muscle shirt. He just bought for the summer. A couple of them getting ready for spring. One guy goes to the gym. He only works out once a day. I mean, once a week. The other guy goes and lifts five days a week. Which one do you want to see in the spring, girls? Oh, come on. The guy that was, woo, he's going to. And guess what? And you got to appreciate that man. you got to appreciate that woman. Because they struggled and pressed their way through to accomplish what they got. Let's go on. Six. I will remember the apartment. My bed 
men meditate on thee in the night watches. Seven, because thou hast been my help, therefore the, in the shadows of thy wings will I rejoice. <coughs> because thou hast been my help, in the shadows of thy wings will I rejoice. Because what? God has been his help. Have you guys ever almost seen death and he's ever been in an accident, smashed your head, your leg, something real bad? Can you raise your hand here? Have you ever been hurt real bad physically? I was. Amen? And was God there for you? Did God take you through it? Are you still walking? Are you still talking? Huh? Even though something real bad happened? Boy, you guys got to talk to Nikki after service. Wait till you hear his testimony. Wait, I don't want to tell you about it because it's really bad. He'll have to tell you if he wants to. It's bad what happened to his head. You guys can't even imagine what happened to his head. Wait till you hear what happened to his head. Let's go on. When I remember thee, six, upon the bed, meditating on thee, the night watch is seven, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadows of thy wings will I walk. Rejoice, because thou hast been my what? Help. Listen, God is telling me to tell you as we come to a close here, you better stop holding on to drugs for your help. You better stop holding on to alcohol for your, for, your, for your help. You better stop holding on to porn for your help. You better stop holding on to pills for your help. You better stop holding on to your mate for your help. Or whatever relationships that are around you for your help. Because still something going down. I'm going to guarantee this. It's all going to fail you. I don't care if it's your brother, your mother, your father, your sister. I don't care if it's your best friend, your girlfriend, your boyfriend. I don't care who it is. They are not going to be the strength that you need. You need strength from God. Your strength comes from God. He said, your strength comes from the hills. God is up in the hills. Principalities dwell in high places. This is where the demons are. They're all up here on top of the hill. So what's God doing? He set 83 preachers for 453,178 viewers worldwide. He shot missiles all over the world from the top of this mountain. Let me ask you a question. Pete, I got one for you. And Gettysburg movie for the war and Mark, I'll ask you guys this question. What would you rather be fighting from the top or the bottom of the hill? Top. Top of the hill. <coughs> Do you know why you want to fight from the top of the hill? Because when they're coming up, you go back. It's hard for them to get up there. Amen? I remember years ago, and this is a real quick thing, I was playing football, and I did real well. These kids got jealous. A whole bunch of teams started chasing me. The first time I played when I had to jump over a fence, I climbed up on top of this guy's house because they were coming after me. I got up on these staircases, and I'm telling you what, I hammered those boys for about five minutes straight. And it was like the cattle coming after me, and I was just dropping like flies. Why? I was up high. They were coming up. Bang! They couldn't get me. But if I was down low, they could have got a hold of me and tackled me on the ground. That's why I are in Mount Carmel. Guys, please go to your Bibles. North Mount Carmel in Israel was one of the greatest battles of ever won. North Mount Carmel in Israel. Look it up for yourself in the Word of God in the Old Testament. Unbelievable battles up in that, in, in that area. That's why we're in Mount Carmel right now. We're up high, shooting air to air missiles. There's no ground war going on here. Every Sunday, we're firing off this pulpit all over the world. All over the world. For God's glory. So that God will be glorified. No man ever felt the rag saved by grace. There's no good of evil God. And neither is no good thing from God. But let God have his way. Here's seven. Because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadows of thy wings will I rejoice. That's why I believe God has been. I do, because Satan has wings. Did you notice in that picture of Dumbledore County? He has wings, and he's a pestle, his head sticks up. He's, he's got a crown on his head. He's a prince of the year, filthy, nasty animal. That he is. Last verses. Verse 8. My soul falleth hard after thee, thy right hand what? Upholdeth me. David said, My soul falleth hard after thee. And that's what I pray as we come to a close here today. That your soul begins to fall hard after you want God in your life. You want the Word of God in your life. You want to go out and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because listen, remember people, if the magistrates are ever going to come now, starving with $22.8 uh, million dollar debt, they literally said in the paper, if you owe any fines now, we need $22.8 million. And we got 
the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that swear by him shall what? Glory. Everyone that swear by who? God shall glory. It said that you shall glory when you swear about the word of God that it is true and it is holy and there's power and strength in the word of God. Hey, did your drugs fill you? Did your alcohol fill you? Did your porn fill you? Did your pills fill you? Did your caseworker uh, and your psychiatrist fill you? Uh, did your warden fill you? Uh, did your seals fill you? Huh? They filled you. But God can't fill you. Here we go, verse 10. They shall fall by the sword, they shall be a portion for the foxes. Verse 11, last verse. But thou, but the king shall rejoice in God. The king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that swear by him shall glory. But the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. That's your enemy. So as we close here, you see that God, David is saying, he sought the Lord with all of his heart, his mind, his soul, and his strength. You go on to see where it says that David trusted in God, and also that your enemy shall be destroyed by the sword and the fox, that they won't be able to take you or hurt you or do anything to you as long as you stay in his word. Listen, there is not one person in this room that's perfect. There's only Jesus Christ that's perfect. But I'm letting you know, God is looking for people that are going to seek him. Mark, we were talking about it. I'm telling you now, there's 22 IS camps in America, and we did 10 years, they're going to take this work. They're coming to take this Bible. They took it out of the schools. They're allowed to, they're allowed to pray in our schools now. Huh? They're allowed to bring their Quran and do whatever they want here. Amen? So let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we just praise you, Lord. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the power of your word. The heading of this message today is called Giving Thanks to God. Giving Thanks to God. Who is God? John 1 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So giving thanks to the word of God, because God is the word. Giving thanks to the Bible, to the words that are honest. Honest, and how do we give thanks? We go out and proclaim the gospel. Not saying it, but doing it. Huh? Not saying it, but doing it. We've got to be doers of the word, not just hearers. We've got to get out and do what God has asked us to do. Listen, the last thing I'm saying to you. God wants to give you long longevity. Listen to this. Listen to this. If you're not speaking God's word, we're ending with this. If you're not going to go out and speak God's word, your life is in danger with God. Not with man. God wants you to go out and speak that word to people. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. If the Lord calls anyone up for prayer.